Hello, this is Photography Gamer. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm reviewing Metal Gear Solid 5, the definitive experience for the PS4. The game is also available for the Xbox One and Microsoft Windows. Metal Gear Solid 5, the definitive experience is an open world stealth game developed by Kojima Productions. The definitive experience features Ground Zeroes, a prologue of sorts, which sets the scene for the Phantom Pain, the main campaign. After the events of Ground Zero's Big Boss, played by Keith Sutherland, falls into a coma. Nine years later, he emerges from his sleep to lead a new mercenary group called Diamond Dogs. The game sees you explore and take on missions in Afghanistan during the Soviet-Afghan conflict and the Angola-Zaire border later in the game. The game also has an online competitive mode. So, what is the game like to play? Well, you are free to take on the main story, side missions, or a bit of free roaming as you see fit. You have a chopper that acts as a mobile base of operations. You also have Mother Base, which is the main facility for Diamond Dogs. Over time, you can grow and expand this base and use the R&D department to research new weapons and accessories. You can even give your staff a good slap if you want to toughen them up and get these new recruits battle-hardened. But back to the gameplay, for the most part, it's a stealth based experience where being sneaky and quiet is encouraged. However, if you want to go big and loud, you do have the option. While doing recon, you can mark enemies with your binoculars or later you can call in helicopter air support. But you're not alone, you have a companion to keep you company and help deal with the enemy combatants. You have a horse, dog and other characters that become available the further you progress in the story. Speaking of story, being a Kojima game, it's very heavy on the cutscenes and the dialogue. For the most part, they're fine, but eventually you will become tired of the excessive nature and length of them. But for me, the best part of the game are the wide array of weapons, accessories and gadgets at your disposal. You can pretty much play the game in any way you choose and use silencers, night vision and diversionary tactics to succeed or you can just jump in with a heavy machine gun and RPG and light up the place. Guns can be customized to your own tastes and the research and development team can create new weapons if you've got the resources. And resource gathering is a big part of the game. Not on the scale of a survival game, but there is a fair bit of exploration and grinding required to get what you need to develop new gear. Thankfully, you have a balloon extraction device which lets you collect weapons, vehicles and enemy troops to send to mother base. Honestly, there's so much more to this game than I've just described, but if I went through every aspect of it, it would literally take me like hours because it's such a huge and in-depth experience. Graphically, the game looks pretty good throughout. The environments look realistic and the character models, vehicles, weapons, etc. They all fit nicely. It's maybe not totally cutting edge to where we are in 2020, but it's still a very good looking game. The sound on the whole is superb. In particular, the voice acting by Kiefer Sutherland is absolutely top notch, although the writing can be subpar at times. The music is excellent and you know, you will also find cassettes during the game with real life songs that you can play in your chopper. So if you want to get picked up in your chopper while it's playing sort of 80s love ballads, you can do that. Okay, what's good and what's bad? What's good? The game offers a real sense of freedom in how you approach each mission. The mission variety and the plethora of equipment available to you adds to the varied and interesting campaign. The mother base feature gives you an interesting management aspect to the experience. The presentation is excellent and it's an immensely playable game from start to finish. What's bad? The story is quite convoluted and a bit of a turn off. The cutscenes seem a bit excessive. Quiet, the main female character in the game, is depicted in a fairly derogatory way and the standard of the script is quite disappointing overall. So, what's the verdict? Metal Gear Solid 5: The Definitive Experience is a thoroughly enjoyable game. The gameplay is excellent throughout with lots of varied situations and scenarios to play through. The weapon list is extensive, the controls are smooth, user-friendly, and the game is very addictive. However, the story does not hold up under scrutiny and the further you go into it, the less sense it makes. Add to that the lacklustre script and an ending that feels abrupt and unfinished. You're left with an excellent game in terms of gameplay, but one that suffers in terms of the narrative. But you've got to consider that Konami and Kojima had a big falling out during the making of this game, and you can feel it when you get to the final stages of the story. It is a real shame, as the game is one of the best games I've played, and it, it really would have been nice to see the full experience, the full story, without it being rushed due to creative differences between Konami and Kojima. 
but despite the issues with the story and the narrative, it's a wonderful game to play and one that you will get weeks and months of enjoyment from. So my score for Metal Gear Solid 5, the definitive experience is 9.25 out of 10. Okay, that was the review. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. This is Photography Gamer, signing off. Thank you.